there's a lot of different combinations that I show on here. There's, there's single stick type things, and then uh, what I call variations or innovations, sticking it a different way. Uh, there's some excerpts uh, from the one drum solo that I've been playing for years. It's probably written about the, the fifth time. And that's the one that I dedicated to Doug Klein hands. There's also a drum solo in there. I started off at, at it's the inverse swinger. It starts over back sticking. But then it actually goes into a version of the Air Force. You guys, the Air Force guys still hear it. Uh, you get a kick out of this because you're going to hear renditions of the old Air Force drum quartet that we did. Uh, there's some backsticking things, stick click things. So we're, we're probably running a little bit behind. So, And at the very end, I wrote a, a drum solo, a tribute to Eric Perlow, who passed away not too long ago. For those that never knew Eric Perlow, I don't think there's about too many that haven't. Uh, been around a long time. And we'll use that drum for that. Uh, Paul Mosley's going to back me up on a bass drum. And then we're going to do a, a tribute to Jack Pratt. And we're going to use a rope drum on that. So if you have the music in front of you, you can just uh, follow it and look at uh, the first page. It's really ironic because the last group on, I, I mean, I caught it right away. Uh, my first line is just single sticking. And my second line is... Did you hear them play that second line? They played that. They played a little slower, but... It blew me away when I saw him do that. I mean, you think everything is like single stick, but they're on the table here somewhere. I gave out as many as I could. Okay. All right, so the very first line we're playing up. We take the bottom line, we have. Now that very first figure, Rally Raiders played that in 1958, which Moodus just did too. They play, and you'll hear us do that on the, the tribute to Eric Pearl with the snare and the bass part that have. Uh, the tenors, they, they, play, they played a... Yeah. Something like that. Anyway, same thing. Uh, okay, we go to the next line. I hope I don't get caught in the wire here. Very simple figure, hand to hand. You're playing one handed drags in a triplet field. So you're playing them, you're doubling, you're ending with like a diddle. The next thing, uh, the third line down, we're going, if I'm going too fast for you, stop me, but I think we're going to run out of time here. Uh, a drag paradiddle, but a single stick. Underneath it is a drag paradiddle, and I have innovation. That's the wrong word there. It should be traditional. Yeah. There you have your tra traditional version of that. Now what I do, I get down the next line, play the same feeling, but I'm playing, uh, it's almost like one hand, one hand that drags with a triple form. <laughs> Did you catch that? Catch sticking with that? Okay. Uh, we get down to the next line. It's actually a flam rough. If you think some of this is, is hard, try it. It's not. Uh, you have to work on the things. The, the thing I find when I do one-handed roughs and things, I really close the things up. You have to really buzz it in there to get it in. You can't play these things too open. And you have your next line underneath that, which is actually uh, uh, measure 21.
Then we dropped on to the last line. We're back to the flame rough. I like to do fours instead of. It's almost like an open roll, but it's in triplet form. Next measure is supposed to be hand to hand six stroke rolls. It, it didn't turn out that way. There's some flames and things there that I can't even put in. But the, ne the next measure there is. So it's top flame one unit. See that? That's it. So they're actually hand, hand stroke troublemakers. And I, Like that. Okay, let's go to the next page. Any questions up to that point? I don't see anybody going to sleep yet, so that's, that's a good time. <laughs> Here we get into some uh, one-handed roughs. Uh, I call this a Latin boogaloo, and if I don't put the roughs in, it sounds like this. So you got Just have a little bit of a Latin flavor to it. Uh, the next now you're getting into your, your one-handed rough figures. And what that is, you play it one way and just reverse it. You go back to the other way. Okay. Next is... Uh, Sort of a strange feel. You got a lot, of, a lot of roughs on the left hand, and here's where you have to really close it up. And you can still bring that left hand up. It, it sort of has a little bit of a visual effect to it. I had it in one of the solos years ago I played, and I emphasize it and kick the other beast on. Okay, here we start with a, this is actually a, a bar number seven. Let's start with a rough, rough a diddle on the right, and then you keep going back to the left. Like that. And then finish it as you go. Let's see what the heck about. Okay. Primarily, everything is it's all on the left hand, and that type of figure there. We go down and we play the six six tuplets with the rough in it with diddles. Okay, very next thing. This is an excerpt from the Swinger, the Edinburgh Swinger. It's actually the beginning of the solo. And then uh, when I get down to 1920, the release, uh, the downbeat of 21, I'm going to keep going with a part that you don't have there. And then the Air Force uh, drum solo thing starts at 22, the feeling, the feeling of the solo. Uh, the Air Force drum quartet, 1958, we were in one of the first ones they had. And Several people in the room were in it also. Uh, it was a very unique thing, uh, and John Dallin, we can give most of the credit for that, I think. But members in the drum line made up a lot of their own things too. We came up with this backsticking, one of the first chords, probably do backsticking, but we didn't invent it. You know, we thought we did, but there's probably some caveman walking around and invented backsticking. So you never take credit for inventing something. There's always somebody else that probably did it before you did. But uh, I think Dallin was very innovative there because he came out with a book in 1958 or 59 on backsticking. Well, nobody else had anything like that. There was a, actually, it was a published uh, manual on how to backstick. So we uh, we went in. Uh, we used to go in drum quartets. We couldn't go in as the Air Force because that wouldn't make it. 
they wouldn't allow us. So we used to go in. I don't know how we competed against Blessed Soccer because I thought we were we were older than that, right? I know I was 21. But anyway, we went in and we competed against BS and we knocked the socks off of them. And uh, they saw us they saw us playing the spike sticking. So they went to Bobby Thompson and they said this was Nardelli and all those guys. They we want a back stick. He said, no way. This is Bobby, you know. Well, I got to the point where they ended up being a first quarter back stick on the field, plus a soccer and junior court, because it was either a point of Bobby letting them do it or they're going to walk out. <laughs> That's the story I got. So, uh, okay, th this starts. Uh, to uh, visual patterns on the next page. I'm going to start off the two, two bar, first two bars using flash sticks. I don't know why, because they're the worst sticks in the world to play with. Uh, they're made out of plexiglass, and the only way I can describe what they feel like is take two pieces of cell where you put them in your hand and try to play them. Uh, Vic Firth has a pair of sticks that line up on impact. They're very expensive. I think they're like $45. But you can play with them. They're really good sticks. They look similar to a Hardeman stick. And even these, you, char you can charge these on a computer. You can see where you get that. But anyway, the, the first figure, basic thing. If you think they sound bad on a pad, you hear them on a drum. It's really good. Uh, next figure, I'll try because as I get more involved, I can't really play with these. You have no console. And then the, the tip just fall off. Okay, where did it go? There we go. The battery will fall off. There's actually a battery in there. There we go. Right off of that. I judged a, an indoor drum show last week. It's uh, they have them every weekend. In fact, the championship I think is two weeks or not on Wildwood. It's a tournament of bands, and this one line came out, and I saw them before. It really never had a really good drum line. Well, they come out, and they had LED lights on the drums, but they weren't lit. All the snares had them around here. Bass drums had them around here. The tenors, like quads or quints, whatever they use, had them around there. And at one impact in the beginning of the show, these things went on. And the show was called Blue, and they were bright blue LED lights. And it blew me away. I don't know, I just said, wow, that's really neat. Well, the next thing, and they had a good drum line too, it wasn't just that's all they had. And the next thing I know, the lights went out. I thought, well, how the hell did they do that? So they're playing, they're going around, and then they're doing, they march on the gym floor, they do a regular drill. So they're going around here, and as the line, the snares and tenors turn around this way, the lights are on. And I asked the instructor, how do you do that? And they had a little, each drummer had a switch, and they just went like that and hit it. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're actually at the, the third line under visual patterns. You notice I like to do this instead of 
I think you get entirely different sound. Not that this is bad. You know what I mean? But I, I like the other. The other has a little bit more feel to it. So hopefully you can take these things home with you. Don't, if I find them in a the trash bin where I'm going, I'm not going to come back next year. Okay, uh, okay let's see where we're at here. Next one. Mostly, it's a, actually a, a traditional um, a single power, or actually a drag power diddle. Let's see what the second measure is here. Okay. Pretty straight on. You see a lot of chords. Been doing that for years. Okay, next one. Okay, we're in the. Uh, oh, this is power, single power drills. Okay. Single power drills, I'm playing triple power drills. I'm back sticking some of the accents. Okay, this next thing, I actually played this in the Edinburgh Swinger. You, you might have not noticed it. It's a back sticking a combination I came up with and I stuck it in there. So you got so you gotta turn it real fast. One thing you might notice about my back sticking, I do this. Most of the guys, did we do that in the Air Force, everybody, or was I the only guy? Uh, when Blessed Sacrament started to doing it, and I guess Bobby said, this is the only way you're gonna do it, it was like that. To me, that's work, I like to, well, what I'm doing, I'm actually twirling. And I'm actually opening and closing and opening and closing. I could stay lower to the drum. To me, it's more comfortable. They got okay, we got through that one. Let me start getting into uh, stick clicks. And Paul Mosley really helps me out with this music because I, I don't I don't even know how to turn a computer on, so I wouldn't know how to use finale. But uh, I sent everything up to him and he puts it on for now. And he said to me with a stick click thing, he said, why don't more people do stick clicks? I said, well, I find when people are doing stick clicks, you have a lot of dead beats in there. You just, especially on a drum. See, in a pad, it doesn't sound that bad. But So what I do, if I write a counterpart to it, I'll have uh, maybe the bass drum playing uh, check patterns on the rim as the snares do it, or some counterpoint to back up those empty beats when you're clicking the stick. But it, it, is, a, it is a nice sound. I think visually, it, it looks fairly nice. Uh, let's see if I got the right one here. Yeah. So you got a little bit of it. it would be nice if you had flash sticks to do that. That, that would look pretty cool. Uh, next thing, it's actually a, a stick click and a flam. It's sort of sort of weird. Yeah. You gotta really keep the flams lowered, it sounds weird. I must have had a bad day, but uh, uh, 
Okay, here we have some more stick clicks. Some of this stuff I might not end up playing on the end because I couldn't figure out the way I wrote it. But uh, I think the very last line, but uh, that's it. <coughs> That's something like that. Okay. And then in the last part, I. There's no end to what you can do with stick clicks. You can. Uh, and you're, you're playing standard rudiments, really. You play paradiddles, uh, uh, single, triple, double, but you just get a different sound on it. Uh, next thing we go to uh, page four. Uh, have favor the right hand. So what you're doing, you're, you're playing a lot of right hand things. We're going to get into some right hand drags, like drag paradiddles, but everything's on the right hand. So we start this first line, basic thing. Okay, get into the next thing. Get into the right hand, uh, all right hand drives. It's all right, right hand drag figures. Don't ask me to play love because I can't. figure now we're back into these uh, 16 notes triplets dotted the uh, 30 second notes next thing sort of a little strange it's, it's not hard to play but you have to count So you got one to five. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. And I thought that was a little odd. That's good for probably a coordination exercise. You're trying to warm up a line, get everybody on the same page. I notice on like exercises like I try to do is wake everybody up, particularly if, well, not just a competitive core, even an uh, alumni core. Uh, when everybody starts warming up, they haven't even had the sticks in their hand. Get their heads on straight. They have to, all of a sudden, they got to think. They're just not going through the motion. You know, they're not doing that. So you get into some oddball things. It, maybe you don't get real difficult to start with, but uh, as, as you get into it, you do that. Okay. Now here, I'm using a, a 30 second note paradiddle with a triplet. I don't know, I, I jumped my, uh, uh, yeah, I jumped the line, so I'm actually a 14. Now this just keeps going without stopping till the end of the next line, but let me just play those first two, and they're actually paradiddles. Playing 16 note triplets instead of playing the double right. The next next figure you have are actually 30 second notes. Ah. some of the same figures on a repeat, but uh, you're changing the textures with the, the, the beats are faster. You're going from uh, a 16 note to a 30 second notes. These next two bars wrote a long time ago for an exercise. Just, uh, 
the time signature changes. You start 5, 8, 7, 8, 5, 8, 3, 4. Now the 3, 4 bars are written wrong. It's supposed to just be Swiss Army triplets. Okay. But this, this sort of wakes everybody up. They got to fit. You got, and you can put some nice bass stuff behind here, some counterpoint. Okay. We get over to the last page. I like to play things uh, inverted uh, playing parallels. That kind of thing, and that, that's basically what this is. You got now what you're doing, you're coming in on an upbeat, going into the second measure. You're way ahead of the downbeat, okay, and that, that's what gives it a different flavor. Next beat, next uh, line, which is uh, 24. Okay, that's your, that's your first line there. Your next line at 25, 30 second note uh, diddles. You got two in the end. I'm gonna put this all together for you. And then we go into three, four uh, for the sweep. And then the next thing, the 4-4 four four is really odd. Coming out of the 3-4 into the 4-4, four four, it sounds like it doesn't belong there. So you got... Let's see if I put the whole thing together. I doubt it, but we'll try it. Uh, I'm starting actually at 24. Now see, I got into the wrong field. I'm actually playing four, that's wrong. That's it. There we go, you have that triple feel. So you got the... I think I got it right the last time. Okay, that's the end of that. You should have a, a tribute to uh, Eric Perlow and uh, John Pratt. If you don't have a part, I have some extra parts. It should be in the back of your part. But I have some loose parts here if anybody needs it. And the concept well, the Eric Perlou thing, it starts with a Raleigh Street beat. You don't think it's a pop, 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 pop. Uh, It then goes into a, a Raleigh, roll off the pop, pop, And then it goes into some drag things, whether they ever play. Trump solo for Eric starts with a Raleigh Street beat, goes into the Raleigh roll off, and then it, in measure seven, I just get into some drag things that. I would feel that Riley would have probably played those days. It's nothing that I know that Perlow wrote. And uh, when we get down to measure 15, it goes into the Skyliners roll-off, because he also taught the Skyliners. In fact, he played with the Skyliners, I think, in the, in the early days. And then it goes into uh, a drum solo that I had a sky feeling for, and I've heard it before, I've heard him do some of this stuff. And then when you get to actually measure a, a 25, or 23 rather, it actually starts, I don't know what the name of the song was, but it's a song that the Skyliners play. So let's try this, uh, let's try this guy thing, okay?
shorter, it's not that long. Play a little slower because it's a little more difficult. Good to go? Okay. <laughs> Oh, wait, I'm playing the wrong uh, drum. I can't, I can't use this fray drum for jack. I'm going to use this one. Those plastic sticks from the 1830s? Yeah. yeah. Paul asked me if the plastic sticks are from the 1830s. <laughs> 29. Okay, there you go. 